Time to play with some play. All right, good morning. It's uh, a wonderful, beautiful, sunny day outside and on this Saturday. And today, I don't know what I'm gonna work on. I'm just gonna work on whatever hits me that I need to work on. And uh, dinner at the uh, Willow Creek restaurant last, last night was amazing. The ribs were amazing. The ribs are probably the best ribs you'll ever eat. And uh, it's up uh, near the Three Forks. Now, if you don't know about the Three Forks, that's uh, where Lewis and Clark came to the headwaters of the Missouri River. And that is 50 miles north of here, the, where the Missouri River actually starts. Back in the earlier or later part, well, back in the early part of the 1800s, after the Lewis and Clark expedition left this area, John Coulter, who was uh, a member of the uh, Lewis and Clark expedition, asked to be relieved so that he could join a couple of other trappers who were. Uh, trapping fur and they saw he saw a possibility for making some cash by trapping beaver and such and uh, so they allowed him to leave the party and join those two ge two gentlemen well Coulter was floating the Jefferson River. The Three Forks is made up of the Gallatin, Madison, and the Jefferson River. Uh, I live on the uh, Madison River here in Madison Valley. And uh, he was floating on the river and uh, was uh, captured by about uh, 300 Blackfeet. Uh, he was drug out of his canoe. He was he was trapping with a guy by the name of Mr. Uh, Potts. And uh, Potts was on the opposite side of the river and the warriors kind of uh, indicated they want him to give up and come over to their side where he was and Potts said not this child <laughs> and uh, he lifted up his rifle to uh, shoot them and, and it was a, a uh, either a percussion or a flintlock I don't know which it was but it was rifled uh, that's how, how you call it why you call it a rifle anyway that's neither here nor there um, he lifted up his rifle to uh, fire at him, and they instantly turned him into a pincushion of arrows. And uh, Coulter was captured, and uh, the women were of the tribe were pummeling him and really banging on him and stripping him of all his clothes. And he couldn't see what was going on because he had kept his eyes closed. And then he started feeling wet, hot, slimy stuff being thrown in his face and on him. And it turned out it was parts of pots. They were cutting him apart. And uh, so they, uh, the chief told the women to step back and leave him alone for a few minutes. And he asked them, how good of a runner are you? Well, Coulter, stripped naked, knowing that he was an incredible runner, said, not good, not very good. Well, 
they saw an opportunity, Blackfeet did, to have a game and fun and kill him at the same time. And so they said, all right, start running. They shot an arrow or something. I don't know what exactly they did, but they let him get to a certain point. Then they started taking off after him. I've seen the land or the country that he ran across, and almost immediately the land turns into a big bluff, and he had to climb this bluff. Uh, to get on top of the bluff and he's running naked and without moccasins uh, or shoes and uh, the country was just covered in prickly pear uh, cactus and if I if you don't aren't familiar with prickly pear cactus it grows close to the uh, ground and a lot of times it's hidden by sagebrush or uh, grass. Uh, we don't have a lot of sagebrush up here. It's mostly prairie grass. And so he'd be running along and step on a prickly pear. And it, you got, I tell you, I've walked out here and uh, you step on a prickly pear with tennis shoes on and it'll go right through the rubber. And it hurts like crazy. So he didn't have time to look where he was running and where he was placing his feet. So he just, was running for his life and he knew it and one of the warriors uh, was getting close to him and Coulter quickly turned around and spread his arms out and it scared or startled the warrior and he fell and his spear broke on the shaft and Coulter quickly picked up the part of the shaft that had the spear point on it and uh, killed the warrior with it. Um, that was the first and one of the only times he ever actually had to take a life while he was out west. Anyway, um, he continued running and he ran oh, a couple hundred miles, I think. He ran past what is now Billings, Montana, which is about a 200 mile trip from here to a fort out west. I can't remember the name of the fort right now. And uh, when he got there, he was, his feet were like hamburger. But uh, he survived. And to tell you how tough he was, he was out trapping the next uh, two, two weeks later. So it's a different breed of people back then. Now that may not be the accurate story I have a, a friend who wrote a book called Coulter's Run, and his book is even better uh, with the detail of it, and you ought to look it up on Amazon. Coulter's Run by Stephen Goff. He really did a lot of research. In fact, uh, they're talking about possibly making a movie of it. So... Anyway, I have a video of Steve telling that story or talking about uh, Coulter. I'll see if I can find it and maybe pu publish it uh, sometime next week. Or republishing it. <laughs> All right, I'm going to just continue working on this.
I got this light check tool on uh, Amazon. Whole set of them. The other one I use, the purple tipped one you can't get anymore. That's the scalp lock I'm putting back on. I gotta get the uh, hair, get some uh, lighter fluid on it. Give me a thumbs up and share my video. 
And then check out my instructional DVDs, uh, the link down below this video. All right, see you next time.